Hi there, I'm Matt, and this is the all-new Speed Triple 1200 RS, which is an absolutely phenomenal machine, with an all-new chassis and an all-new higher-capacity 1160cc triple engine. And today I'm here at Triumph's Technical Training Centre in the UK, just around the corner actually from the factory, to tell you all about the new engine and its development. The project to develop the new Speed Triple 1200 RS started back in 2016, and while one of the goals was clearly to shift engine performance to a whole new level, the Triumph team also wanted the new bike to be lighter and more agile. In essence, a Speed Triple that handles like a Street Triple. Therefore, right from the outset, the chassis and the engine were developed together as a fully integrated project to ensure that the engine and performance delivered on this overall ambition. At 180 PS, the new engine is 30 PS more powerful than the last and final version of the 1050 speed triple RS, which is a huge step up and puts it into a whole different league. It also has more peak torque, now 8 newton meters up at 125 newton meters to be precise, and a smoother, stronger torque delivery. And you can see from the curves, the new generation has all of the low down punch that the Speed Triple is famous for, but now delivers a major lift from the mid-range all the way up to peak revs. Together with the fact that both the engine and chassis are significantly lighter, this gives you a 26% higher power to weight ratio, and with it, a massive increase in acceleration. With overall lower inertia, the engine is even more responsive than the previous generation as well. Now, inertia is basically a measure of how easy it is to change the speed of rotation of a component. So the lower the inertia, the easier it is to change. For the Speed Triple 1200 RS, the inertia has been fine-tuned to achieve the perfect balance between smoothing out those fire impulses between cylinders, you need a certain amount of inertia to do that, and allowing the engine to change speed quickly when you want it to. All of that gives a really refined, responsive and precise feel. To maximise the flow of air to the engine, this aerofoil section just here under the headlights has been developed using computational fluid dynamics, the same tech that they use in Formula 1 and MotoGP to optimise the design for an unimpeded flow of dense air. And the enhanced airflow here is essential for the increased performance. Of course, developing the new engine from scratch meant that the team were able to design and optimize every single component from the largest to the smallest to achieve a lightweight, efficient, compact, and high-performing power plant. Now, one of the smallest are these, the finger followers, and I'm gonna show you now exactly where they go. Now, these little beauties sit between the camshaft here and the valves just underneath and transmit the force needed to open the valves as the cams spin around. Now, to make all that power, you need to get lots of air into the engine, which means you need big valves. And you also need the engine to rev, which means you need to be able to open and close the valves quickly. The finger followers help make the whole valve train lighter, reducing the reciprocating mass and allowing the opening and closing profiles to be optimized for a powerful, clean and efficient engine. Uh, the upper and lower pads on the finger followers are also finished with an ultra low friction diamond like carbon coating, minimizing friction losses and giving excellent wear resistance and durability. The cylinder block is also a completely new one piece design. Now, the old 1050 speed triple had three individual cylinder liners, whereas the new model has a separate barrel block which contains all three cylinders and the cooling water jacket in one casting. A casting as one unit means you can have a single wall thickness between the cylinders here without compromising the structural integrity, giving a narrower, more compact, lighter engine. It also means that the flow of the fluid through the cooling circuit can be much more precisely controlled and optimised within the integrated water jacket, eliminating hot spots and concentrating the cooling where it has the most benefit. Throughout the engine, the engineers have sought to reduce mass, and the benefit of a blank sheet of paper meant that they could really pay attention to the detail of every component, as a few grams shaved here and there soon add up. For example, the inlet ports are an asymmetric design with the ports closer together. This means that the engine has a smaller, lighter throttle body, which also helps with the compact packaging. The starter motor clutch housing is lighter, as are the gears, and you can really see the difference between the old and the new parts and just how much material has been removed here. Uh, the engine covers are magnesium, which is significantly lighter than the aluminium used in the covers on the outgoing model. The crank pins are cross-drilled, removing unnecessary material. 
And the latest design and casting technology has been used to optimize the wall thicknesses and the geometry of the crankcases to save on weight. And the manufacture of the exhaust system uses a state-of-the-art high-pressure waterforming process, also known as hydroforming, to optimize the wall thickness and allow these transition pieces to be a lighter, more precise one-piece design. Plus, the clutch and the balancer shaft have been redesigned to take advantage of a sophisticated new manufacturing process, resulting in the removal of the anti-backlash gears, which were fitted to the previous model to deliver the same level of refinement that the new engine now achieves without them. Several of the processes in the engine, including this one, work to an accuracy of just a couple of microns, some even less than a micron. And to give you an idea of just how small a micron is, there's 1,000 microns in a single millimeter. But it's not just reducing overall total mass that's important, it's also about where the mass is positioned on the bike and where the centre of gravity is. That's also critical for achieving the level of agility and handling precision that Triumph were aiming for. So as well as reducing mass throughout the engine and across the chassis, the team, of course, also optimised where that mass sits. And one part of this is the move from the twin high-level exhaust of the previous generation 1050 model to this new single side-mounted system, which is both mass centralised and compact. The centre of gravity of the new exhaust is lower and further forward and really helps with the overall agility and handling of the bike. There's also a new exhaust valve located just in front of the silencer to tune the exhaust gas flow for different engine speeds and loads. And having this means that you can fully exploit the engine for its signature triple performance, which is really strong from low down and all the way up through the rev range. Using a combination of computer simulation and real world testing, the whole exhaust system has also been optimized for sound quality to make it as characterful and as exciting as possible whilst maximizing performance and of course being within Euro 5 and US EPA regulations. Another area that contributes to mass optimization is the new stacked gearbox, which is both lighter and more compact. Being more compact gave the team more choice as to where to position the gearbox, helping to centralize mass and resulting in a shorter engine, allowing the chassis to be optimized and ultimately benefiting the overall handling of the bike. As you'd expect with a completely new gearbox, the ratios have been designed specifically for the new engine and its power curve. The team have also applied all of Triumph's latest best practice engineering for super slick gear changes. And this gearbox is paired to a brand new slip and assist clutch. Now this uses ramps in the clutch to force it together when under load. So there's the ramps inside adding to the force of the clutch springs and allowing more power to be transmitted from the engine to the gearbox. Now the opposite is also true when downshifting aggressively where a controlled amount of clutch slip is allowed to maximize rear wheel control. There's a new higher friction clutch plate material too which transmits more torque for a given pressure meaning fewer plates and a lighter more compact clutch. The new Speed Triple 1200 RS has an up and down shift assist as standard, which has been developed using the insight Triumph has gained through its involvement in the Moto2 World Championship. There's an advanced new sensor that gives the engine control unit a wealth of information, allowing both up and down gear shifts to be fully mapped against the number of parameters, just as the Moto2 race teams do as well. When changing up, the shift assist adjusts things such as ignition, fuel and throttle angle to momentarily relieve the pressure on the gears and allow them to slide. This is a much more sophisticated system than a traditional quick shifter, which would simply cut out the ignition. When changing down, again, the system monitors and adjusts various parameters and precisely controls the throttle blips for a lovely smooth shift. The other thing to note from Triumph Moto 2 Racing is the impact of the program on the reliability and durability of Triumph's engines. The 765cc engine in Moto2 has been incredibly reliable while still setting new lap and highest speed records year on year. And the beauty with Triumph is that unlike most other manufacturers, they don't actually have a separate race engineering team, which means that everything they learn from the racetrack can be taken back to the road. For example, learning how to make a race engine durable has translated to an increased service interval of 10,000 miles, that's 16,000 kilometers for the new speed, helping to keep the cost of ownership low. For me, I can tell you that it's been absolutely fascinating to talk to the Triumph team about this incredible new engine and all the work that's gone into this all new generation. As you can see, this is a real state-of-the-art piece of engineering designed and developed right here at Triumph's UK headquarters using the very latest technology and techniques. 
And having ridden the bike myself, I can promise you that this is matched by an equally advanced, agile and precise chassis, making it an absolutely superb bike to ride. Well, that's all from me for today. Thank you so much for joining me for this in-depth look at the new Speed Triple engine. And if you haven't had a chance to test ride it yet, get in touch with your nearest Triumph dealer and book yourself in.